Hello and welcome back to Learning English Pro. In this English lesson, I'll be giving you a complete glossary on the barbecue. I will be explaining different spelling options for this word and diving into vocabulary relating to getting your barbecue ready, types of barbecue, handy verbs, plus lots of tasty food options. Get ready for a lesson packed full of new English words. And don't forget the entire word list for today's lesson is in the description below. And if you want even more English vocabulary on food, I have a full playlist ready for you. The links are on screen throughout the video and in the description below as well. Let's jump straight into our lesson. And our first word, of course, is barbecue. Barbecue is the word we use for the appliance we cook food on outside. You may have also seen this spelling of barbecue. This is simply a variant of the spelling of barbecue, and it's perfectly acceptable. A common abbreviation of barbecue is BBQ. This abbreviation is commonly used in text messages, or you might see it in a restaurant or in a supermarket. The word barbecue is also a verb, and as a verb, it simply means to cook on a barbecue. We can also use the word barbecue to describe the event of the meal or gathering at which the barbecue is used. And let's not forget that barbecue is also a flavor. The flavor of barbecue is added to lots of different types of food, like chips, but its most common iteration is barbecue sauce. And this sauce can be a big feature of any barbecue. An important part of the barbecue is the grill. These are the metal bars which get hot and at which the food are cooked on. And some people will refer to the barbecue as the grill. And some people can even call it a barbecue grill. The type of barbecue we have on screen can be described as a portable barbecue or a small barbecue. The top part of the barbecue is known as the lid or the hood. This can be left open or closed depending on the cooking process. There is also the option for a built-in barbecue, if you have the space, of course. Let's move on to the different types of fuel that you can use with your barbecue. And of course, the most common is charcoal. Charcoal is known for giving intense heat and a distinctive flavor. And with fire comes flames. The flames are the hot glowing part of the fire. And after the flames have died down, we are left with the embers. These are the small, glowing, hot pieces of charcoal. A product which is commonly used to start a fire with charcoal is lighter fluid. This can be quite a toxic substance, so it's good to use only a small amount where necessary. Another type of barbecue is a gas barbecue. These can be less messy than a charcoal barbecue and require a gas cylinder or what we call a small gas tank. Some tools we use when cooking with the barbecue include the spatula. We also have the tongs, skewer. And this product in American English is called aluminum foil and in British English, it's called tin foil. Let's take a look at some verbs we might need when using our barbecue. And the first one we have is prep. Prep means to get something ready. Let's use it in a sentence example. I prepped the barbecue earlier and it is ready to use. We can also use this verb when discussing food. Earlier this morning, I prepped the meat for the barbecue. With meat for a barbecue, it is common to marinate the meat before cooking it. This involves soaking the meat in a sauce, typically for a few hours before cooking. The type of sauce used is called a marinade. A phrasal verb which is useful for any cooking event is chop up. This means to cut something into small pieces. Let's use this phrasal verb in an example sentence. He chopped up the vegetables for the barbecue this morning. So when you have everything ready, it may be time to fire up the barbecue. The phrasal verb fire up means to get something going. And in this case, it means to start the fire of the barbecue. We could say, we will fire up the barbecue this evening and have a party. 
And when you want to maintain the fire, we use the verb tend. Our example sentence is, Mary is tending to the fire in the barbecue. And when we are finished with the barbecue, we have another phrasal verb to use. Put out. To stop a fire, you put it out. Let's use it in an example. Peter will put out the fire once we are finished cooking. And for cooking on the barbecue, we have the verb to sear. To sear means to burn or scorch the surface of something with sudden intense heat. And we do this with meat to lock in the moisture. I always sear my meat to make sure it is moist. Another common phrasal verb we can use when cooking meat is flip over. And as you can see on screen, to flip over means to turn something over. We could say, tell Jane to flip over the sausages so they don't burn. Okay, let's move on and take a look at some food which is commonly served at barbecues. And first up, we have the steak. Steak is traditionally a beef product, although you can get chicken and pork steaks. However, if someone offers you a steak, it's most likely to be beef. And when it comes to steak, there is a very important question. How do you like your steak? The first cooking option is where the steak is very lightly cooked. Rare. The next option up is medium rare. This is where it's cooked just a little bit more. And then we're on to medium, where the meat starts to get more brown. And so on to medium well done. And finally to well done, where the meat is completely brown all the way through. Our next food option is the hamburger. Like the steak, this is also a beef product. Although there are some variations, you can get a chicken burger. And for vegetarians or vegans, there is usually a veggie burger option. A famous meat dish for barbecues is ribs. The most common type of ribs served is pork ribs. However, beef ribs are also sometimes on the menu. A popular serving option for meat and vegetables at a barbecue is the kebab. Vegetables, meat or both are placed on a skewer and cooked over the barbecue. And being an Irishman, I can't help but love grilled potatoes on the barbecue. These are traditionally wrapped in tinfoil or aluminum foil. And take it from me, these go really well with any meat dish you're having at a barbecue. Next up, we have chicken. And really, any part of the chicken is great for a barbecue. Popular choices include the wings, the breast, drumsticks, and the thigh. If you'd like to learn more English vocabulary about chicken and chicken meals, check out my video. The link is on screen right now. This is the sausage, and a sausage can be made of any type of meat, and there are plenty of options for vegetarians. The most typical meat used in sausages is pork meat. A German variation of sausage is the Frankfurter. A serving suggestion for sausages or Frankfurters is the hot dog. A hot dog, of course, is where we put a sausage between a bun and typically add lots of sauces. Speaking of which, common sauces at a barbecue include ketchup, mustard and mayonnaise. For more on different types of condiments, check out my video. Link is on screen now. Getting away from meat, salad is a great option at the barbecue. It is typically served on the side. A type of salad which is really common at barbecues is potato salad. This is boiled potatoes mixed with salad cream, mayonnaise and spring onion. But when it comes to side salads for a barbecue, my king is coleslaw. This is cabbage and carrots mixed with mayonnaise and it's really, really good. Trust me. And the best place to put all of this food is inside bread. Typical types of bread you'll find at a barbecue include buns and rolls. 
And that brings us to the end of this English lesson on barbecue vocabulary. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And let me know if you think I forgot any of your favorite barbecue foods. Then you should head over to my YouTube channel, Learning English Pro, where you'll find a huge assortment of English vocabulary videos. And coming up on screen are some video suggestions just for you, along with the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So hit that to make sure to stay updated on all my latest English lessons. That just leaves me to say, I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, keep learning English like a pro.